Yeah. When I was in secondary school, I shocked my dad. I was I told him one time I was going to pay my school on my own. And Wait, like, in secondary school? Yeah, SS2. I eat like five, six times every day. Yes. The day you don't eat up to that, for my body, if I don't eat up to that, the next day you can tell. You know, Nigerian parents, they want you to just go to school, be done, go and serve, move, hop on to the Find 95. Find a job. Yeah. 95 is not for me. One guy at one event, he met me, I was like, oh, wow, you were the winner, that's so nice. He was like, I was going to text you, we need to work. And then when he started texting me, the work was like, damn, I like you. you look. Oh, my God. It was one guy who made me dive into Forex. He was my age mate, and how would my age mate be having close to, like, 500 million in your account? Where you see that kind of money? Hello and Wagwan Lagos. It's a beautiful day and an exciting episode of Behind the Filter. You already know, my name is Okolopis Uche. I am your host for this amazing podcast series. Behind the Filter, as you all know, is a space where we discuss the raw and unfiltered parts of individuals navigating the delicate balance between real life and social media. My guest for today is a fitness and lifestyle creator, model, actor, and he is the current Mr. Ideal Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Daniel. Hey, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good as well. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So um, let's just get right into it. All right. I know that you recently graduated from university yeah. you studied statistic yep tell me about it why statistic well, well everybody thinks i'm that math guy i am not i legit liked computers yeah when mm -hmm. i when i finished secondary school i wanted to go for computer science oh yeah i applied for computer science but the school gave me statistics when my dad told me they gave me statistics, I told him to go cancel the admission test. <laughs> Who was going to switch from computer science to statistics? Yeah. yeah, I told my dad to cancel the admission. It was like after two months when I realized all my friends were going to school <laughs> and I was the one left at home. I was like, I can't spend another year at home. Yeah, yeah I just was like, I will just do this. Yeah, and then still focus on what I want to do because you can have any uh certificate you want in the computer based system by just going to practices yeah. you don't have to go to school to do actually, that mm -hmm. yeah so i just went for it because you my dad wants me to be a graduate that's what that's usually <laughs> what every what every parent wants yeah. yeah so i just did that to satisfy his feeling yeah and i'm still focused on what i want to do mm. so, oh, what is it that you want to do yeah so i was good in programming yeah and as I, st I still am yeah, I just still need to go I for more I was going to ask, programs. like, was in the past? Yeah, I was. I, when I finished secondary school, I was already making basic websites. I I, I made websites. <gasps> yeah, I, wait, I went it, for... Wait, did you say when you finished secondary school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 2018. <laughs> I mean, not a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like they say, if, if it's what you like doing, you're going to find different ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I went for one tutorial just once and I had basic knowledge on how to create websites at that time until Nigerian school system came to move me to statistics. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically it. So how was it like studying a program that you didn't want to actually study? In Nigeria. In Nigeria. It was, it was to be honest... My first two years was frustrating. I was always shouting in the lecture theater. You were... I can't wait to, to, to be done. There were some points where I'd be like, can I just drop out? Oh my God. Honestly. Because no. cause imagine having to study and also the, the, the hassle of every Nigerian school. Trust mm. me, everything don't keep up to time in schools. And the strikes, uh, you understand. It would just frustrate you because this is not what you wanted initially. Yeah. If it was computer science, I would enjoyably do it. But statistics, nah. But I'm glad I scaled through. Graduated this year, uh, at so least you were able finally to do done. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you graduated with flying colors. Uh, ones, at least uh, uh, I, I, I should be. You, I still be. You still did well, My like... parents would want you to. <laughs> With, with 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 what I with what I came out with in work, yeah, you would think I would I was going to go with, oh, do serious things, yeah. but I'm still good you at least. Yeah, serious. I'm still. They, they saw me as you have to bring out the good. Yeah, I'm the first son, so you oh, know all of this. Mm, <laughs> that pressure. Yeah, that well, pressure. I'm good. I mean, I've graduated. Daddy, see your certificate. That's all I went to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you wanted and I've done that now it's time for me to face what I want to what do what you want and yeah. you said um, and it's actually leading to the path mm -hmm. computer science is something I just like but now I'm moving into being an actor those are those are when you talk of the entertainment aspect mm. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I'm this guy that wants to do everything. You want to do everything. I think I, I picked that up from my dad. My dad, my dad. Oh my god, that man, the work, anything he wants to do, mostly. And you ask him, why can't you pay so much? I can't do it. That's wow. what he says. So yeah. I would say I picked that up from my dad. So computer science and basically the entertainment industry, those are my two focus now. Your two focus. Interesting. That's very lovely. (laughs) So now that you're graduate, you're a graduate and you're done with school, how is life after school like? Huh. I would say, to be honest, I I I would say I prepared myself for it because while I was in school, I've always been this person that I would hardly ask you to do something for me. If, if if I know I can do it or I can sort a way for me to do it, mm. I was going to do it without even making you know that I was doing something. Mm. Even re- while I was in secondary school, I don't know if 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 I just wanted to, I won't call it show off, but I just, I just like to be a man of my own. Yeah. When I was in secondary school, I shocked my dad. I, was, I told him one time I was going to pay my scripts on my own. Wait, like, in secondary school? Yeah, SS2. Crazy. You decided you were going to pay your own school fee? <laughs> yeah, and he was shocked as well. I was like, I mean, but I don't know. That is basically did, just. Were you? Did you eventually pay your school fees? It was when I had the money. I went to tell him that I'm paying my school fees oh. for this time. He was shocked, and I'm like, "How do you get the money? Mm-hmm. I mean, you used to give me pocket money now." And that's one thing I've just known how to save money because mm. you never can tell when it to come out needful for you. I I really yeah. need to learn how to save. <laughs> <laughs> in this in this economy now, oh, my savings is not is not strong again because. Yeah. Ah, you know how it is in this country. Like, so it's harder. Like it everything is, harder is like times cause, two. Because times two the price. Looking at the price of fuel when I was in mm. school and now, first was it is six naira, now it is seven hundred. <sighs> Can you imagine seven hundred almost in inch- eight hundred? It's crazy. That is times what yo. Times like we'll be fine. I don't know. <laughs> it's more it than is double. too much. It is uh, more than double. Are you saying double or? <laughs> Because it's well, crazy. It's actually be fine. crazy. It'll be fine. It's, yeah. it's the country. So. Life after school. It's, it's life, life after school is is something else. It's eye opening, right? I would say, like I said, I prepared myself because while I was in while I was in university, mm. yeah, when in two hundred level again, <laughs> I stopped asking my dad for money. Wow. There's sometimes where I felt I felt I was disturbing him. My dad decided to give us money uh, monthly. Yeah, and every 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 time of the month when I call him. I'm not the core person. So I don't remember him until I want to ask for money. And I hate that. Oh, so it's now you're remembering me. Yeah. No. To be honest, I hate it. So I just, when I was in school, I started looking for money. I I, I started with uh, going for all these ushering jobs. In 100 level, I was already going for ushering jobs. They pay you 2K, 3K. All those, they we're yeah. still catching it up all of, all of those times. Yeah, and I was still good with computers. So I got a remote job in uh, 200 level. Second wow. semester, I got a remote job in Binance. So I was getting paid quite good. I was chilling. I got That's a nice. place for myself. Uh, my dad was now, mm, this boy, you, you don't call me again. I'm, I'm chilling in school. You like don't, you don't need money anymore. Yeah, so I just, that was that was what made me uh, stable in school. And I would say it's actually helping me now because if, if I didn't do all of those at that time, <clears throat> getting a place for now. myself now, getting everything I got at that time, I'll be living in the streets, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, I just, I prepared myself for all of that. And it was chilled because I'm still living the life to now. Even if I lost the remote job, because you remember when they banned Binance in Nigeria? Oh, yeah. So I was I was part of those that were affected. Oh, are you we are serious? Good, we are good. We are still pushing. So Still, like, you have no choice pushing. but to keep pushing. I mean, if you like, stop there, who's going to pick like, you up? Nobody. push you if you don't yeah. push yourself. Like, so it's I've very just, important. I've just been doing that, basically. And it was... Almost after uh, um, Binance stopped, the, they introduced me into the modeling and all. I I was I was into modeling in hundred level. Okay. Yeah, I went for a pageant in hundred level, Mister Fresher. Oh. I was I came out last. I was so disappointed. Are you serious? Well, yeah. I, was, I was expecting you to tell me that. Oh, I won. Nah, you no, won. That was my first to... pageant ever, and it was it came it, like oh my god, I was so disappointed, <laughs> but. That was what I liked doing. When 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 they, they were calling winners and they didn't call me, I was shocked. Mm-hmm. And then one of the um, sponsors came to meet me. I was like, I have the body, I have this, I have that, but I just need to have the whole audience. You know, pageant mostly, you need to carry the crowd. You need to have that exposure that everybody knows you and all. So it's I, very important. And I was a fresher in school. Nobody knew me. So oh, yeah. I got that. For like how many years? I just, I just turned my back on pageant until uh, last year, 2023. Yeah. 
some agency just texted me on Instagram. You look good. You could do this. You could do this. All those times I was basically just walking out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was just walking out and doing my thing. We're going and to get into the whole walking <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. So they just texted me and they were like, I could give it a shot. I literally just did it because I felt I could give it a shot. Mm. And last year I won Mr. Ideal Abuja. So after winning that, I'm like, this is my first try again after how many years and I did that good. So like, I need to dive into this because I I have a shot. So that was what made me um, apply for Mr. Ideal Nigeria. Nigeria. And here you have the king. Yeah, (laughs) the king is here. Yeah, so (laughs) that has been it for me. Modeling just came as... Hmm, would you try it? Yeah, I did. And I, I like it. And it became something you liked. Yeah, yeah it's been good so far. It's been very good. Yeah. You've not had like any challenges, you know, navigating I, of the course, industry. I, I did have all of those challenges. Tell but me I about just, it. I just liked the fact that my management always, they would, they would hold you hand in hand. They would tell you, this is what you're supposed to do. This mm-hmm. is what you're supposed to do. They just, they took me like... Well, that was what I told them. I was a baby. I didn't know anything about the industry at that time. So they just basically brushed me through anything I have. Because once once you are a pageant skink, you have a lot of DMs and all. So you have to know which to answer and all of those. Mm-hmm. So I was basically just brushed into it. And yeah, they guided me through. And it was, that's been good. I think one thing when you're going into modeling is, yeah. one important thing you should note is that you find the right management. Yeah, because right it is very... Trust if you're me. in a management that don't care about you're going you, to crush your dreams. You you would feel you would feel you're not at the right spot for it, and that's the funny thing. It's it's it now makes people disappointed in themselves, yeah. not knowing you're not with the right management to push right you out there. So it's I'm, very glad, important. I'm glad to be in the right management. Because you House could be in a management in, yeah. a, in an agency and you're not doing anything there. Some people just want you signed in their management. They don't want to do anything for you. And, and that's just wicked. It's crazy. That is what's happening in this country. So, yeah. And the funny thing is, you might actually be doing well. Yeah. And they might just use you for branding. Take your money. You might even get money and you don't know you have the money. You have the money. Because you are under that management. And when once you're under a management, yeah, Anything that's happening happens through the management before it comes to you. Mm. So if your management is not being honest to you, you won't even know. You've lost it. Yeah. And it will be like, it is the fault is coming from you, not knowing there's an underground movement. So that's it. Any aspiring model, like if you know you want to be a model, make sure you do like research on the management, the agency that you're applying for. It has to be strong management. Yeah. Not just something that is just coming up. People that actually care about your growth and want to see you grow. Like you need to be very, like very... (laughs) Look out for management that are bringing out stars. Because to be honest, that was actually what made me still go for this um, Mr. Ideal. Because if you look at the back uh, past Kings, that's where um, Emmanuel from Big Brother. Big Brother, yeah. Yeah, Craig went for it as well. So yeah. when you look at that and you be like, ah, this is not, this is obviously working for them. So you have to put your head there. That's what I did. Tell yeah. me about your experience as Mr. Ideal Nigeria. When, when it was, it was recently, right? Or when uh, did you win? 2nd of June, last yeah. month. Last month. Yeah, oh, it's still reset. still very fresh. Yeah, still the fresh key. Fresh key. <laughs> Yeah, it's ah, been chilled. The experience been like... It's been chilled, actually. It's even hard to make me move from Abuja to Lagos. Oh, you moved? Yeah. Interesting. Because, to be honest, because this is where you have all the opportunities, Lagos. Lagos. Abuja is a chilled place, but it's just for anybody that wants to stay and chill. But when you're coming to Lagos, you're coming to work. You know, you're coming to chill and do all of mm-hmm. this. So Lagos is where it is happening. For me to be in Abuja I and see... I have a question on living in Lagos. <laughs> I didn't even know you moved from Abuja I swear, to Lagos. I did it just moved. Yeah. So how is it like? Because I know people are always saying that Abuja I have is... Lost, so it's I different. have lost my way multiple times okay. in Lagos already. She, Lagos is already being so harsh. But we are going to figure it out. Yeah. yeah so Lagos is being so tough. But how are you adjusting? Because I know Lagos is like headset, the traffic, the... The whole thing going Everybody on. It's literally frustrating and, and just... Not just the traffic, the rain. I remember as last the week rain. when the rain was crazy. Once it was it rains in Lagos, it floods. I couldn't go out without the rain, yeah. I just cancelled the whole outing. I'm like, okay, today you stay indoors because I could not come out of the gates. It was flooded. <laughs> And Are you don't see that in Abuja, do you? No, nah, how, how would you see that? How would you? Be, how you see? <laughs> I was talking to someone and they said seventy percent, seventy percent of Lagos is water. That was what somebody was telling me. I'm like, what would you expect? Literally. Any small rain, you see water. Like but it's chilled. Flood. I'm a survivor, so I'm going to, I'm going to pull through. You're gonna survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Interesting. So you also mentioned that like you are a certified forex trader. Yep. Tell me, I don't, I don't really know anything. I don't know much <laughs> about forex. Like once I have forex, I'm like, okay, foreign exchange. Like, what's it about? Forex is basically, uh, like you said, foreign exchange oh, of right. yeah, you are. <laughs> are you saying, guys? <laughs> yeah, of of different foreign exchanges like dollar to naira, mm-hmm. pounds to naira. It's just you studying the markets, studying this uh, local and international markets. It it goes a long way, honestly, but. You just need practicing. I lost a lot of money because because I've been this I've been this guy that is weird. I just usually jump into something because I do it the wealth way. Even content creating, yeah. When people's like when people say they have a routine to do this and that, to be honest, I don't. When I started working out, I just started posting because I liked it. This is what I did today. Post. post. This is what I did yeah. today. Post. Until one day I woke up, I put, I made one post left my phone and came back and I was like seeing like 200 followers at once all of this oh. like okay is this is what you're talking about <laughs> I just kept on doing it yeah. and that was how it was for me for forex as well I just dived into it when when I when I started forex the first month they will always tell you don't put your money into it when you when you're starting practice for like three months or so the first two three weeks I don't put, weeks yes <laughs> I brought money and put I bashed it. It wasn't even up to 30 minutes that I wasted that money. Are you serious? That's that's the funny thing. So after that, I learned I learned my mistake. So you I went back. Down. I had to, I, I, for like two months. I was just trading demo demo accounts where you have fake money in it mm-hmm. until I was good enough. I'm I'm still not even good enough that well. But in forex, once you're good enough, there are there are um, um, traders that that fund upcoming traders, if you don't have much money to trade, if you're scared of losing your own money, they just yeah. give you a funded account. So that's basically what I did. I did for um, Funded Next. I passed their... Um, <clears throat> they, there's this program they give you. You have to um, trade the account from a certain amount to a certain amount. So they give you a $300 account. You have to raise it to like a $1,000 before you can pass that program. And once mm-hmm. you pass that, they give you real money to trade with. Oh, whatever wow. you, whatever you is your profit in that account, it will be yours. So I passed their um, program and I was giving $600 cash. And Ooh. I raised it up to $3,000. Wow. Yeah, from, so the six, from 600 And you were supposed to go to 1000 Yeah, I raised it up to And 3, you took it to three. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, that was how I got the certificates on that funded next. Yeah. And it's basically just been that. Forex is ups and downs, ups and downs. So you just... Until you want to do it full time, and me, I'm doing forex. I'm going. I'm going into content creation. Daniel is still a model and all of those. Yes, actor. So I'm basically just learning to balance all of it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for forex. You know, when I hear forex, usually what comes to mind is calm, cyber crime. Like are you see, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I, well, you, yeah, most people, forex? most people are using, most people are using forex to cover up for. Yeah, it was like, because oh, I ding, mean, ding ding ding, like yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, because you can just some money you would want to show off, and you can you don't yeah. have any reason to tell for how yeah. you got it. Yeah, but forex is that's one thing people that don't know forex. Yeah, mm-hmm. when, once you dive into forex, trust me, you you wouldn't want to do anything else. Forex is like another blood money. Once you're a professional forex trader. Wow. You wouldn't want to do anything else. I have, it was one guy who made me dive into Forex. He was my age mate. And how would my age mate be having close to like 500 million in your account? Where you see that kind of money? And then, to, I didn't believe him at first. 500 million? Honestly. Honestly, like for a fact. From Forex? For a fact. 500 million? It happens. So he was, on the, he started showing me posts. I'm like, what? Bro, I can actually do this. Yeah. And... Since then, I've been into it so far. We're hoping to get there. <laughs> hoping to get to that place where we don't have to do anything. That where just you are making five hundred million. Honestly, <laughs> it's crazy. It's that's, crazy. That's really chilled. I mean, it's a soft life. Work. You don't you have to do home, anything. You yeah. just all you need is a laptop. Yeah, and basically, and your head. <laughs> <laughs> but there are days where you where you hit massive losses. Trust me, you you would you would want to hit your whole self for doing that, but. Oh, yeah. I mean that's life. There are ups and downs, so you have to know so how to control. When those. you when you experience such, when you take risks like yeah. that, and you experience and you take your money and you lose that money, yeah. how do you handle it? Because some people, 
once they lose an amount of money, it's depression straight. Uh, like, me, how do you handle it, and how do you keep making those risks? Like, yeah. continue making, even knowing that you might lose your money. For me, I feel, I feel if if risk takers are people that are very stubborn, and I am a very stubborn kid. <laughs> yeah, because because there's one thing: if you if if you want to make it, you cannot just stop at stop at one try stop at two tries you have to keep on doing it you have to be consistent in doing it mm. because you never can tell which is the jackpot day yeah so you just have to keep on doing it as much as you know there are there are risks to doing it like they always say higher risk higher reward so that's basically it. once once you know there is still more to to take out of it yeah you're just keep going to keep on doing it just keep going yeah just keep going even if you're like be you're so not many, getting what you want. Thank you. You're so many things money. to disappoint you. Yeah. To, bro. But as long as you know this stuff, you're not just doing it for the fun of it. There is there's an outcome for it. I mean, that's that's enough for to keep you going. As long as you know there's something at the end of the tunnel. So, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. That's really nice. <sighs> I'm still shocked <laughs> about the 500 forex. million. It happens. That's the funny thing. I, you should have heard of Habib Forex. These are young guys making... Habib Forex has... He has an organization where he trains people now. This guy... There was, there was one time he was live. He was like... He, he opened a trading account. And the money he makes out of that account, he was going to use to, to buy a car. He did it that morning. He started trading that morning. I think he his profit was over $2,000. Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred. So tell me, thousand dollars. One morning, just one morning, and he's a pro trader. So money from me. Do you know I ha- I really had no idea or inkling like you know what, what they do once really you die, on once forex. You, once, you, once you put your mind into it, once you see what is really going on into the forex market, you leave all you're doing to go and trade forex. <laughs> just me. <laughs> yeah, because it's nice. So if you, because... but just just be ready to lose money. That's the thing. I don't want to just. Lo- I don't want to lose my money. If you don't want to lose, you can't get more. That's the sad thing. So you have to you, lose to get more. That's the thing. You you obviously have to learn from your mistakes. You cannot just go in there and expect to want to do everything perfect. There are some things where you just some mistakes you have to make on your own. Even the person teaching yourself wouldn't mm. tell you that this is because the the market is 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 something unpredictable. Yeah, you might think it's going your way and then now nah, it's going to crash. Like, I always see people post, you know, they make posts about how, oh, the, I don't know, the, the terminologies the tre- you guys trend use. Trend lines and all. <laughs> I don't know, but like, you're always complaining about, oh, the stuff is low. Stop losses, profits, Pro- and all of those. All of I, I can't even bother to even, like, Yo. stress, but I always hear about it. So, I, it's nice that you've kind of, like, given more insight yeah. on Forex trading. If, 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 if you want to go into it, just, just, just be ready. Just know you're capable of doing it. And I don't let anything make you give up. Because mm. the moment you give up, then all you've been doing is just goes to waste. Then why did you start? Well, yeah. Yeah. So if 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 you're starting, just know you're starting to to get the main profit. If if you're not on profit, then you've not started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. So that's it. Okay. So um, how? Let's go back to Mr. Ideal Nigeria. Okay. How was it like contesting in the main pageants, meeting people from? You know, different places different in the country. Places. It was it was so tough because <clears throat> I've never gone for something like that that big. When I was going for Mr. Idil Abuja, I felt oh Abuja is my place. I know people around that were going to help me. Mm. But Mr. Idil Nigeria, who who do I know? Yeah, and when 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 he started calling all the contestants and I started seeing people that were as there were more than my size. I was like, okay, this is this is actual competition. competition. This is where you meet different kind of men of your of your likes. Mm. Yeah. I was at some points when I saw um the little boards yeah of people coming up, I was like, yo, can I actually do this? Cause you don't know where anyone is coming from. Mm. You don't know their background. You don't know how strong they are. You don't know the until connections they have. Until you actually see them for themselves. And there was one time where where they said we had to get uh and social media attention where we had to have a specific number of likes and all. And I was seeing celebrities commenting on other people's. I was like, Jesus, my own is gone. Oh I don't even know how. Yeah. That so it was. put a lot of pressure. At some point, I was like, when I wasn't sure, I was like, can I, can I do this? I told my, 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 my dad is not even in support. So I wasn't even going to go to that. I told my mom, I was like, she's like, Ah, it's what you want to do. If, as long as you want to do it, you shall do it. My mom has always been the supporter. So she was, she, 
she just tells me, this is what you want to do. As long as you know you're not going against any rules, just keep on doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was always my mom I went to. And she was like, if I want to do it, I should do it. If, but if I'm feeling discouraged, I should not do it. I'm a stubborn boy. <laughs> and that, that was what I wanted. So I just, I did it regardless of me thinking if I was going to win or not. I just did it because, I mean, if I have the experience, this is still going to build me to come another time to probably win it. So yeah. I just went there to have the experience. Also with the mindset of having to win. To win, yes. I mean, you never I mean. can tell. <laughs> you never can tell. But it's and, been good. And you did win. I mean, Were you expecting it? At some point when I was in the camp, yeah, when, when we got to the camp, yeah, it was it was becoming qu- quite tough because we had top five. I was among the top five. So I knew I was a strong contestant. Mm. But then there was this one guy, one fair guy. He guy was always hitting me. Like, <laughs> when, like when I'm first, he's second. Oh, when he's second, okay. I'm first. We were always giving that close markings. Yeah. My heart was beating on the main event. I was literally shaking, to be honest. But it is what it is. I did, did my the, best. Did the other guy come on? I was like first runner up. He was his first runner up. Ah. <laughs> like we were in real battle, both yeah. of us. Yeah, it was a tight one, bro. Yeah. I Usually, would say it was nice. Oh, okay. Nice. Usually, you know, pageantry is very expensive. We had that conversation yeah, before. It is, it How is was it expensive. like? Doing it, huh. contesting, putting was, your it was, everything. It was it was it was literally so draining to mm. be honest. Because I remember sometimes where when I when I went for the first competition, Mr. Dila Buja, I was in school at that time. Yeah, and there were some times where I had to come back down to Abuja to take some pictures for some time. They would say contestant needs to meet for so so and so. Whoa, I, settling for having to come from Ekiti to Abuja and back. Mm. How do I get all of those? But I thank God I already had that uh, social media uh, exposure. I had a quite number of followers. I had like 20,000 followers already at that time. So mm-hmm. that was where the help came from. I just posted on Instagram, I'm going for this competition. If uh, like I need supporters, anybody. Funny enough, Instagram that I that I thought people were just there to see my body or people <laughs> just... Honestly, people started texting me. Oh, wow, that's nice of you. You're going for this. Oh, you're going for this. Nice. People not even from this country, honestly. Ooh. And it was nice because I never knew I had those people watching. That's one thing in Instagram. You if you're never doing, know, you never yeah. can tell. If you're doing good, if you're doing bad, someone is always actually watching. And if if when it comes to time like this where you need help or something like mm. that, that is when they actually come out or not. Yeah. So that was where I I I got more encouragement. People texting me, "Don't worry, we got you." I had one man wanting to even sponsor all of that, but oh. he was he was wanting to be he wanted to sign me, but I I don't want to be signed into any of those because <clears throat> it will bring all these complex movements, them having to tell you what to do and all of those. And you also uh, have this this management. management under, so I yeah. wasn't ready to do any of those. It should just be conflict of interest, yeah. basically. But funny enough, he still actually tried to help and all of those. It was actually so nice. Instagram did a lot of a lot of support for me and it was nice. That was, I would say 50% of the help I got was from Instagram. Instagram, yeah. wow. So yeah. social media kind of like played a role in very big helping role. you. A very, very big role. Win that Price. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> yeah. So how what was your parents' reaction? Because you mentioned that your dad wasn't really in yeah, support. My dad, my, my dad, my dad never even knew I was going for Mr. Dila Buja until I won. So it was when I won, he texted me like, I never knew you could even do something like that. So, <laughs> like, don't worry, you don't even know me yet. When I'm out there, that's when you know. Yeah. So after after I won that, he thought that was all sure. It was calm for a little while and then I brought the Mr. Idil Nigeria to him that I would have to travel to Lagos and all of those. And he was like, am I sure this is what I want to use my life to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know they were saying Honestly, your life has to <laughs> My dad was like, this is the path you want to follow. You cannot remember the son of who you are. Oh, wow. Those. I was just like, uh, this is where I am right now. My dad just, you know, Nigerian parents, they want you to just go to school, be done, go and serve, move, hop on to the 95. Find a job. Yeah. 95 is not for me. It's honestly. It seems like all the guests I have on this show, 95 is not for them. Trust me, because that's the thing. I wouldn't say, I think I, I said it wrong. I wouldn't say 95 is not for me. I would say uh, working under someone is not for me. It could be for a while, probably when you're not stable and all, but mm. if you have if you have a goal, I mean, why are you trying to fulfill someone else's goal when you have yours to fulfill? So there, I feel, there is that too. Yeah, so I feel... <laughs> 
if you're going to work a nine to five or you're going to work under someone, it shouldn't be something you would plan your life on. Like, I want to work all my life for somebody. Mm. Then you don't have any purpose in this life. Yeah. If you're working a nine to five, it's just probably to help you support yourself at that time. For that meantime. Exactly. Yeah. So that is how I see it. So after, if you work nine to five, leave that stuff and focus on your life. I have things I want to catch up to. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be a very, very top-notch actor. Trust me. I am, that is... Where I'm putting my focus on right now. Yeah. yeah. So all these Nigerian actors, y'all should watch out for me. Watch out for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's basically it. That's interesting. Yeah, thank Lovely. You. So how has, you know, you said you moved from Abuja to Lagos. How yeah. has living in Lagos kind of influenced your career? Because you said it yourself. Lagos yeah. is the hub for entertainment. It is, yeah. It, is, so it has it actually like? done a lot because this is where you get to see everybody you have been looking up to firsthand. Yeah, I still went for the Trends Up Award and I saw some nice content creator. You can even ask them some questions on how they coped on coming up and all of those. And it's been nice because you get you get to live the lifestyle for yourself. Yeah. In Abuja, you if you don't want to go out, you can stay in your house and you're living fine. Mm -hmm. Lagos events will draw you out. You would have to go out to experience There's all of this. There's something like every night, so as every long day. As, as long as you're, you you want to be in the entertainment industry, I feel Lagos is the right place for you because this is where you get all the engagements. You you have to, you get to meet different kind of people mm -hmm. and you share ideas, you share business minds and all. So I feel Lagos is is the place for 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 someone like me. For someone just like you. That, that wants to do entertainment. And it has been helping you because you've been, been going out for different events, yeah, people. different events. And this is where I got my first role as well. So you see, <laughs> that's 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 a good start to tell you that Lagos is the place for me. So yeah. So acting, acting is like a passion for yeah, you. It's been a very 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 strong passion for me. But when I said it. Like in acting, I didn't have all the opportunities I would say I have right now. When I when I when I started like in acting, I even went to text Dwayne Johnson. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a whole script. No, I wrote real? a whole script and sent oh. to him. Yeah. So until then, I was I was still just writing basic scripts. I didn't know anything about <laughs> script writing at all. Yeah. I would just write any story that comes to my head and mm. and try to play the character. Oh. Oh, all of so those. Cute. Yeah, until now that I have the opportunity and I'm now currently going under the Royal Art Academy. So once I'm done with that, still go to Ebony Life and be done with that. Mm -hmm. Once I'm done with that, I'm sure I'll be very good at acting. Okay, okay. So you also, you're also into modeling too and yeah. you started like... I literally just started. Like I said, when they all brought the pageants, stops and all, yeah. that was when I started, you just started being it. so consistent on modeling and all. But before then, it was all just fitness. Fitness. Yeah. Well, I'm keeping fitness for the last because like, <laughs> that's... I have a lot to say about that. You have yeah? a lot to say. Yeah. Yeah, so what are the challenges that you face during the competition? I would say financial challenges. Mm. Yeah, and also um advices from my friends. Some yeah. friends some friends would always see it as when I told some of my friends I was going for a pageant and they were like, Do I think I can win? Do I know what is going on in all this industry? Mm. Guy, if you don't have money, you can't do all of these, mm -hmm. that you need to buy the crown and all of Yo, at some point I felt discouraged as well because that is what the society is talking about, so basically. And if you want to go what the society is saying, it, it is easy. Because that's what everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. But except you know what you want. To be honest, I had so many friends, even some elderly people who tell me, are, are you sure this is what you want to go for? And all. Yeah, it was a very, very big discouragement. But I'm this person, I'll still do whatever I want to do regardless. Regardless. I, I, I might feel discouraged and all, but I will still go back and think and come back. I will do this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I still just, I did it regardless. Like I said, I still had help from Instagram when, when I was running low on cash. I went on Instagram, like, yo, this is what's going on. And help from nowhere came. Really? And you, you reach, you actually put it out there and people... No, I just put it on Instagram. Like, yeah. I need supporters. People need to vote for me. When, mm -hmm. it, when it came to that voting, mm -hmm. I... You go. You have to vote yeah. for me. Yeah. So that was where the support came from. And you mentioned that you spent almost like three million. Yeah, for the whole and... competition. Yeah, it was crazy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, if you didn't win, you'd probably be very sad because, like, I would say if if I would say I'll be sad because. That's one thing with me. I'm I'm always not looking at what I have done. If I'm doing something, I don't I don't always put it to something I would hold to. Because if 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 you're holding it to yourself. 
that's the that's the only thing that happens. You mm-hmm. just keep holding it to yourself. Yeah, nothing happens nothing after that. Actually. But you have to look ahead. It has happened. It has happened. What next am I going to do with my life? Mm-hmm. That's basically it. But if if I had lost, I'd, I'd, I would be sad, of course. But it is not any any point that would make me look down at the competition or myself. I would still going to keep going. So yeah. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. So speaking on society, what people say, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people come on and say male pageants are not for the straight yeah. guys. They're for people that are kind yeah, of like bisexual, yeah, or, like bisexual or, or yeah. Yeah. So like, have did you experience that kind of like? I mean, you would. I've I've had different guys text me, of course, not from the management, but you know, like you said, everybody has that initiative that if you're going for a pageant, a that pageant means, as a guy, yeah, like, so that yeah. means you like guys. So all that guys would come to be like, oh. <laughs> So they're your DMs. Honestly, and the funny thing was, I still, at one guy at one event, he met me, I was like, oh, wow, you were the winner. That's so nice. He was like, I was going to text you. We need to work. And then when he started texting me, the work was like, damn, I like you. you look. Oh my God. <laughs> he said the work. I'm like, you, y'all need to rest. But I think people just have that wrong initiative of pageants, yeah? Of course, these people are out there. Yeah. There are guys are like guys. Just some of them that might even compete for it. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean you having to go for it is... is, is that you're also... Yeah. yeah. It does not mean that. There are people there with different sexual uh, backgrounds and as well. And it's okay to feel how you feel, right? Honestly, and the fun thing is I actually... To I'm this person that don't be. care. Whatever you see, yeah. Bro, as long as I know what I'm doing, this is my life. As long mm-hmm. as I know this is not what I'm doing, this is what I'm doing. Bro, say whatever you want to say. I'm I, chilled. I think that's like the most important thing. Once you know who you this, are, thank what you, you bring. Don't like, let anybody shake yeah. your belief. That's basically just But do it. you have, have any of your friends come and ask you like, Daniel, are you sure you're still straight? Of course. Or, I have. It, it, it still goes on till now. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> like, is it annoying when they ask you that kind of question? Sometimes it is, but... I mean, if you don't explain it to them, they would they would never know. So mm-hmm. some to, to the closed ones, I always just explain this is what is happening. Not like they are not there or something like that. Yeah. But because people are talking mostly about it, doesn't mean that is what is going on. Yeah. So I just explain it to the people very close to me. But as for those who are saying whatever they want, I mean, you saying it does not add anything to my you life. Concern you. I ain't concerned you. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, honestly. That's just it. So I, I I mostly just keep a blind eye to it. I don't I don't put my attention into it. It's best to yeah. I feel like people really need to understand that like pageantry yeah. especially for male pageants yeah. it's not it's not what you think it's not what you, you think you can be whoever you are and apply for it and apply for it yeah. I mean there are like female beauty pageants why can't there be male beauty <laughs> I mean, pageants they want to bring gender <laughs> yeah, into it now I don't know, I know like, it's, it's not what they all think of it yeah so, we, we really need to put it out there to yeah. people so that they understand, understand for sure for sure but yeah, that's by the way. Let's mm-hmm. get into your fitness journey. What you've been waiting for. What I've been waiting for. Because <laughs> I look at him like... <laughs> <laughs> I've not even gotten to where I want to get to yet. Please, where do you want to get to again after this? You said you want to look like Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson is the goal. But like, people that... <laughs> Dwayne Johnson is Dwayne Johnson, right? Yeah. Imagine you are as big... Because I feel like people that, that walk out, body beauty, they come off as a bit scary, like too much. That's, that's the thing, but... Are you not, like, I don't know. Should I say, scared? are you scared? <laughs> are you not scared that girls will see you and be like, oh my God, you're too big? No, that's the thing. Oh, a, most a girl, girls like it. Yeah. And a girl, a girl, a girl that would like you, would like you for you. I feel, I, I don't have to do it for audio girls, just for one girl that I want to be with and that's it. If it's okay with me being big, mm-hmm. then that's fine. If nobody's okay... I don't feel you you wouldn't find a girl for you if you're so big. You, you just say you would hardly find... not finding a girl for you, but like... What's the public wants? Yeah, I don't know. Like, when you come out, you're all built, very big. Looking scary. Looking scary. Like, I just was going to beat you. <laughs> nah, to me, it's, it's, it's... From my own point of view, this is what I like. Some people always say I come out so harsh. Like, when they see me, mm-hmm. they're just already scared of me. Immediately, yeah, because of your... Why? Beat. Why are you scared of me? You've not even walked up to me or anything. <laughs> yeah, there was this... We were just in and she was like... Before she knew me, whenever I was walking this path, she was going to change her paths. Uh-uh. 
she, like we don't talk i don't do anything to her but just the fact that she's seen this beauty guy walking yeah. she go change road <laughs> <laughs> like you don't need to I'm, I'm not going around beating people beating anything like right. but girl you know ladies now you just have that initiative that ah, this guy is looking so scary let him not come and beat me now that's a, that's a come well, come actually, if this one grab me like this <laughs> yeah most ladies will say that <laughs> They will say, guy, yeah, girlfriend, they try, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so let's, let's, are different. Let's, let's talk about how did you, when did you start working out? Is it something you just decided to do? Like, I want to start When I started fitness. working out, yeah, it's, it was, I started working out unconsciously of me wanting to get big. Yeah, one of my uncle, whenever I got to his place, he had these dumbbells and barbells in his house. Yeah, so I just go there and want to show power. I want to show that I can lift this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was how he started. Wow. And I always went to his house. Whenever I went, I was still going to carry it. So, you know, it, it just became a usual thing until 2018. 2018, I went to download an app for workouts that, okay, I want to actually work out. Mm -hmm. Then I started home workouts 2018. I wasn't that much consistent. I would just work out probably for two weeks straight. And then for the next three months, I'm not working out again until 2020 when the lockdown came and then mm -hmm. everybody had time for themselves. Truly. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people discovered more about yeah. themselves in 2020. 2020 was, <laughs> was, was everybody's time because you had time to focus on yourself. Yeah. Yeah, so that was when I started working out for real. And after the lockdown, I went to the gym. I was always working out at home. So after the lockdown, I went to the gym early 2021. I started working out in the gym and it's been that Here so far. Here you are. Yeah. <laughs> Not still satisfied. Not still satisfied. <laughs> you want more. Yeah, I want more. I still want to get bigger. Wow. Yeah. So what has been the biggest challenge in like maintaining this lifestyle this fitness because i know it's not easy to work yeah. out do you do you go through pain yeah you do but you don't look like you that's the thing body readers, that's the weird thing yeah you learn to enjoy the pain you actually enjoy the pain it's sweet you you just know you're going to the gym to destroy your body today <laughs> yeah and the funny thing is after that pain you still have a pain of all your muscles being sore. When you walk out today and you're done with lifting irons, mm -hmm. the next day you're going to feel sore. Definitely, you're going to feel def yeah. Like for a day or two. But I mean, that's the process. If you want to get a body, you have to go through all of that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a, a discussion or debate online about, you know, steroids. Steroids. Yeah, steroids, um, supplements, yeah. like... And those enhancement, do you get like, is it something? Yeah, it is. It is, it is something. People do take steroids. I mean, some people believe I have taken steroids. And I don't know how, see how tiny I am. Well, well, to Wait, me, I am did tiny. You say, did you say tiny? <laughs> <laughs> what did I not say? <laughs> like I said, I'm not satisfied. So I still feel I'm not big enough. To some people, I am. Some people will see me, like, where are you getting big to? Mm. But that's the me. I want to get. I still want to get big. I'm not on steroids, please. Okay. I'm not taking steroids. <laughs> I'm just taking this just whey protein. That's the supplement. Oh yeah. That is what I've taken, and I've been off. I've. I've it's been like six months now I, that I've not been on supplements. So I just take them sometimes because it boosts your growth. If you want to get okay. big so fast, yeah. As long as you're working out, you can take them. But do you think this steroids are uh, steroids? I'm going to keep saying steroids. Because <laughs> it's not for you. <laughs> yeah. Steroids. Like, is it necessary for, like, to enhance? Like, does it actually enhance that performance? Yeah, it does. But, but in what way? If you take steroids, yeah. Yeah. In two, three weeks, I can assure you of getting, I would say, 40% bigger than how you were. Yeah, steroids work. It works like magic. That's the funny thing. Wow. That is why it is not good. It's not people good. People who take steroids are people who who wants to take bodybuilding as a career. Mm. Yeah, if you want to take it as a, this is where you get your money from. So I mean, they would they might want to risk it. Mm -hmm. And if steroids has its own side effects, if you take steroids, sometimes in some occasions you might not even be able to give birth again. Wow. Yeah, there are lots lots of hair, lots of skin. It's crazy. Interesting. So for you to want to take steroids, you 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 need to have. A, a very pro, strong pro, reason, pro reason yeah, to yeah. do all of those. So I don't, isn't, it is never for me. I've, I've, I've not thought of it as an option. Please. <laughs> How would I have kids? <laughs> yeah. So, nah, it's not for me. It's not. Yeah. Interesting. But like the industry, the fitness industry kind of like promotes like 
an ideal body image, like people that look like you. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think it kind of puts pressure on people that don't look like you? I mean, it's almost full pressure. <laughs> to be honest, I, I still tell my friends, why, why, why would you be a guy and you don't even work out but at like, all? Why do you need to work out? Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because people well, will come for me maybe, and you need to maybe, work out. Maybe it's because... I like it so much. Mm. Yeah. That, that's why I feel it's a necessity for me. And when people tell me, do I want to do this for life? I say, yes, I want to. You want to? It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. If you want to take fitness serious, you have to make it a lifestyle. If you stop working out today, then from today, your, your body starts becoming unfit. Oh, yeah? wow. Yeah. It's, it's something you have to keep on doing. If you don't like fitness, you can't keep on doing it forever. Trust me. If the Arnold, Arnold is still working out. How old is he now? He yeah. is so old and he still works out. Still, so if you like doing it, it's nobody against So it's something tell. you would want to keep doing yeah. like... It is for life. I signed up for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's nice. So that, that means in the next like two, three years, you'll be bigger than this. Yes, that's the plan. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I'll be bigger you than this. You'll be intimidating everybody. Uh, you, you don't need to feel intimidated. Oh, you like naturally, if you see someone bigger than you, you would feel in, in, kind of intimidated. I would maybe a little, but my what will be in my head is give me time. Don't worry, I'll match up to you. <laughs> it's, yes, I wouldn't feel... People that feel intimidated are people that don't actually want to work. If you're feeling intimidated by somebody, the person did what you can do as well. Mm. You're just not wanting to do that work. Yeah. So if you want to do it, you shouldn't feel intimidated. You should be motivated, actually, because <laughs> if this guy can do it, I can do it as yeah, well. I do it too. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. So tell me about content creation. Oh, yeah. Creating fitness, con like content. Did you decide, you said you decided to start posting it because you yeah. love doing it. Yeah. How has it been for you? It's been, it's been chilled because... To be honest, I didn't I didn't start doing it as something I want to do for myself. Mm. Yeah, I started doing it because I wanted to do it. When I when I got into Instagram around 2016, 17, that was when I signed up into Instagram. I was literally just watching everyone. And then I found the fitness home. <laughs> yeah. And they always just posted everything i just liked it and wanted to be in that community yeah. as well i just wanted to be like oh i work i like working at as well why can't i post on instagram mm -hmm. that was basically what i i saw and it started with me posting a picture just go to the gym and snap one picture and post and then i started making videos and started posting my account went from i wasn't i was on 1k followers for like a year and then one day i just posted one picture and then i saw so much engagement wow. it was crazy i'm like okay now we have to keep on doing this. So it was this. something you consistently kept yeah, doing. I just you. I just kept on doing it, kept on doing it. And the funny thing is you might you might feel discouraged at some point in time because yeah. there are some social media like yeah. I feel like there's they always that point. Head. Yeah. There are some points where you put you bring out your best content. You say, God, I've never posted anything like this. And you post <laughs> it, bro, you get three likes. <laughs> Did you yeah, just God damage really your mental crazy. head? Because yeah. yo. But if it's what you like doing, you're going to overlook all of those and then still come back to do it again. Mm -hmm. So I get I, that was what I was just doing. Every day, come back. To, I wasn't posting consistently, you, yeah, but I just didn't stop. I just kept on posting, and yeah. posting, and so much more. I get, I, I started getting the the engagements and thirty five k followers. Thirty five k, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So like, how do you, I mean? You said you started from where? From one k followers. From one k. Yeah. And <laughs> and you skyrocketed to thirty five k. Yeah. And it's been I think since twenty twenty. Like, yeah. When I made my first account, Instagram deactivated it. I I created like three accounts during lockdown. I made the first one, the band. Second one, the band. Uh, but why are they banning you? I honestly didn't. <laughs> I felt probably, I don't know, maybe somebody was um, reporting my account. I don't know. Then I, when I created this one, this present one, I was like, this is the last account I'm going to create. If they block this one, I'm done with Instagram. That's what I did in mm -hmm. 2020. And I created it and I'm glad I didn't give up, Shaq, because if, if, I, if, if I didn't sign up for Instagram at that time, You might God have knows. not gotten... Yeah. 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 So it's my passion for it that still keeps me going. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a misconception about fitness, coaches, trainers, and bodybuilders, basically. Like, uh, you guys are like, they used to say you guys are show <laughs> gigolos. <laughs> well, am I right? I want to say you're right. This is, this is literally... But am I wrong? No. No. 
you uh, uh, mm. let me explain let okay, me explain understand. yeah so basically what's what happens in the real world mm-hmm. they are actually outside as well <laughs> so that is still what is happening in the gym industry i would say just there, there, there are some guys that want to do whatever they want to do and there are some guys that they really go to the gym to look for ladies mm-hmm. and there are some ladies as well that do the same thing mm-hmm. so I'm the guy that does guy. I I did do guy for girls. If you Ooh, cannot walk up to me, please. I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Not like I do guy shy, but I'm, I've always been the shy person. Yeah. To to walk up to a lady has been one tension for me. Yeah. So I'm always this. If you don't talk to me, I won't talk to you. Mm. Not like I'm being proud or anything. Yeah. You can see me frowning my face for a moment. And it, and one moment, somebody comes to talk to me. I'm smiling like one oh, boy already. <laughs> yeah, that's how I am. Yeah. I would frown my face because I don't know what's going on until you walk up to me. Yeah, that's just it. Nice. So you... I'm you, just there. You mentioned... So you're not... I'm not part of them. Yeah, please. Part. please, I'm not. I'm there to work out. You can't tell that I'm there to work out. <laughs> yeah. But do you like coach people and train people? Yeah, personally, if you walk up to me, like if you actually want to do it, but I don't put it out there that I'm mm. a trainer at all. But mm-hmm. if you walk up to me personally, I've had I've trained like two elderly men in Abuja. Yeah, they had big stomachs and all. <laughs> you know, this is my body. I mean, people will come and say they like my body. They mm. want to catch up to. These people just want to go to the gym to. Would I say waste time? Just some people you see at the gym, they're just there because probably they have issues at home or something like that. They just want to have a free time for themselves, basically. Yeah, yeah but there's some people that would want to do the work as well. And when they walk up to me, I don't that is not an issue as long as we are working out together. You know, people fear like, you know, personal trainers and coaches with their wives, their yeah. girlfriends, yeah. like <laughs> they will carry your wife. <laughs> Yeah, that's what has been going on but yeah. that's the fun that's why I don't want to put this out there because they have like you said they have that tag they give everyone as mm-hmm. long as you're a fitness trainer ah mm-hmm. this one they carry people wife all yeah. of those so nah please I don't do that I'm just on my own yeah, please do <laughs> I don't yeah so your uh, fitness and you, you said you've gotten like I just mostly post fitness content mm-hmm. yeah and that is what is on your page yeah. you fitness said you've content. gotten like messages and dms from people around the yeah. world yeah even i still there was one guy i trained online i just basically told him the kind of food he was going to eat when to work out and all of those yeah i mean if you're online you get dms from different places of the world so yeah do you get dms from girls of course trying to get you <laughs> hey of course Hotsy, of course daniel <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course i do of but course. of course but you, you would have to filter them so you, you know? get men and women it's not easy to put genders. It's not easy. It's a flex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very big flex. Yeah, I well, tell you. To be honest, I just sometimes I put a blind eye to it because. Do you respond to these DMs? Not all of them, because you you can't even keep up. Mm. And just 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 the time. Plenty. You can't keep up. Just <laughs> <laughs> the time where I was honestly tired of going to see my request on Instagram because because oh. I I had a conflict of keeping up. I, 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 if we are not in a physical space, yeah, I'm this kind of person that if I'm in Abuja, I chill with my friends that are in Abuja. Mm. If I'm in Lagos, I chill with my friends that are in Lagos. If you're not here, we, 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 we don't necessarily need to keep on talking every day. Mm. As long as we are G's, any yeah. day we meet, we still vibe. That's basically just it. So there was a point in time where everybody would just require this attention that, why, why are you not texting me? This? Why? Mm. Uh, I was, I was choked up and, I made a decision. I wasn't going to reply to anybody. I didn't want to meet anybody new. I was just, <laughs> please don't talk to me. You don't want that was to how I was, to, yeah. honestly, because I wasn't even keeping up with people I had already. And then you're still telling me you want to be my friend. Yeah, I can't keep up with that, please. So, but I feel I've just found a way to balance it. If 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 I'm not seeing something worth us talking, if you, I'm not gaining something out of it, I I feel there's there's that. no point in mm-hmm. having to know this person. So if you're not being something good, nah. I'm just good. Are you? There. Can I ask? Are you in a relationship? Nah, I just left one early, late last year. Oh, what happened? So. Can I ask? What happened? And then break my heart. Oh, they broke. Uh. <laughs> Not you breaking the person's That's heart. A funny thing. Well, well, well. Maybe I have broken some hearts. Maybe. Maybe. But they mostly have broken my heart. Oh. Yeah. Even if I look like one hard boy, I'm yeah. a hard. Don't mind me. I'm a hard boy. But but I, I just still a part lover boy in me. So yeah. 
Oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. It happens. It happens. It happens right? Yeah. But how are you able to deal with it? Do you know, usually people that usually work out like this, once they go through heartbreak, yeah. they're like in the gym, like two for seven, like I need to build thing. on my revenge body. I've never had that, that, that thinking of wanting to revenge with the gym. The gym has always been what I like to do, yeah. To be honest, when, when, when it happened, I mean, I was... Uh, I should not be saying I cried on no. on on social media. No, because, stop. <laughs> yeah. Men crying is not a bad thing. Actually, it actually. is not. The fact that you actually have access to your emotions yeah. is one hundred percent lovely. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's not what everybody would say, though. No, but for real, like they really need to wake up and know that men have emotions too, actually. and they are allowed to cry. No, nah, not they in want front to. of everybody. Well, yeah. You can't. You can't see me crying. Know, okay, maybe girls are <laughs> crying in front of everybody. Want to cry? Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay to cry yeah, too. It's not my, yeah. I, I, I've never seen a reason. If I, if there are sometimes where I just want to feel numb, even where you just listen to songs and just want to be there. Mm -hmm. So it happens. I've never gone to say ah, I cannot cry. If I want to cry, I'll cry out my eyes yes. and then be done with it. Sometimes you even feel better. Actually, like once you cry, you, you know you've taken all of that thing in your head out and like, you're good. You can calm down. So yeah. it's chilled. So when, when it happened, I was I was bittered. I would say for four months. I wasn't even myself oh. for fucking four months. Wow. But now I'm a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are back stronger. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, what has been the toughest challenge in your fitness journey, maintaining it, and all of that? Do you, have you ever encountered any challenge? The, the one and only challenge in Nigeria is financial challenge. Financial, honestly, because because this is something you have no family supporters. Mm. When, when I started working out, yeah, I told you I started working out at home. Whenever I started doing push-ups and all, my dad would call me and be like, "Oh, you don't have work to do. I will give you work to do, so you won't work out." Honestly. So it was when I went to the university, yeah. I mean, you won't see me working out in school now. That was when I had time. So I didn't come back home for like a year. I was working out in school and all. And then when I got back home, he was like, ah, this is my picking dumb big. <laughs> he wasn't able to complain anymore. Now this time I wouldn't even tell him that I don't go gym. There's nothing he could do again. Yeah. I mean, he he found out that this is something I like to do. So there's no point in for if you like force me not to do it to change when I'm at my own space, I would still do it. That's yeah. one thing. So he accepted it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so the only challenge has just been financial. Yeah. Oh, mm, mainly and myself as well. Just sometimes where it's hard to keep up. Yeah, because you would have other things going on. When I was in school, it was hard balancing going to school and then mm. having to work out because I like talking out in the morning and then you still have money lectures. You have to go to class. Honestly. Too. So I had to find a good time for myself. And it was choking because immediately after school, you still have to go to the gym and all. But it was something I liked doing. I just liked working out because at some point, I, I liked the body. I told you I started working out because I wanted to show that I have power. Mm -hmm. But then the body was coming and it was looking sexy. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, ha I have to keep up. Wait, wait, were you very, very skinny before? <laughs> Because I know people that you, that look like you. If you see their throwback picture, I was skinny you'll be like, as I was skinny. Wait, as. is this really Daniel? <laughs> oh, like some people still. That's why I said some of my friends think uh, I take steroids. Oh. I don't. Because if you see me, if you see me, let's say twenty sixteen, uh, oh. to speak <laughs> <laughs> honestly. But that's one thing. Once you, once you start working out, yeah, the difference the difference can show very fast depending on how consistent you are and how much you eat as well. Mm. Um, uh, you have to eat much food if you want to grow. But there's people that just want to keep fit. They just want to have a specific kind of body and yeah. not get big. That one you can eat regularly. But for me, I eat like five, six times every day. Yes. The day you don't eat up to that, for my body, if I don't eat up to that, the next day you can tell. You said five to six yeah. times. Not, I wouldn't but say what are you eating? Food. What's your diet like? I can have, my, my first meal of the day can be six eggs. <laughs> yeah. Did you say six eggs? Yeah, I've taken eight, nine eggs per day. I was on that for like a month when I was bulking. <laughs> That's why I told you it's expensive. No it is expensive. Six eggs. Yeah. Do you know how much egg is right now? Thank you. It is that it is so 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 expensive. And you, oh my god. But you have to keep up. Wow. So you eat six times a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I only eat once a day. Oh so I'm hearing you say you eat 
Six six times 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 and I'm like, I'm not serious with your life. <laughs> <laughs> wow well, it happens if because like i said i want to i want to i want to get bigger so as as i want to get bigger i have to eat more mm-hmm. that's why oh. <sighs> every day you'll be going to the supermarket to buy food stuff or because you have to buy them in bulk if you're buying them one more that's that's when it gets me even more expensive mm. that's those are the lessons i learned because at some point i was getting them individually get this one now get this one now but when you've seen how much you spent Nobody will tell you to Nobody buy that. Nobody will tell you, you to buy our ones. Ah, yeah. oh, that's the thing. You need to have plans. You need to plan everything. To be six honest, eggs. <laughs> You're still short. I'm still thinking. I'm like but six eggs. I'm not a professional bodybuilder. You need to go into bodybuilding to see what people take. People, people eat whole chickens like ah. for a meal. Bodybuilders, they blend chicken, <laughs> yeah, in blenders and drink it. Can Why? You do that, yeah, to, Why to get the body? <laughs> yeah. it's it's a mind blown literally yeah. like pff. it happens wow so so much goes into building that body it's not so easy much, so much so it's much not easy from at walking all. out to knowing what to eat to knowing when to work out it's it's if you like i said if you want to be a professional bodybuilder you have to take note of all of those and it gets to a point where you have to even measure your food to know the amount of food you take when you want to take so you them. calculate yeah the where you hear where they are counting calories, calories and all of this <laughs> yeah that's where it happens interesting yeah. interesting it's crazy you know there's this um bodybuilder very dark man do you know him <laughs> yeah i do i mean who does it right <laughs> so well, what, what do you think about his whole personality and his whole very dark man social media shenanigans he literally just sees his mind that is that is what i have seen from him and one thing in this life everybody have different point of views mm. nobody would actually agree to what you're saying not everyone would agree to what you're saying mm-hmm. so him he's literally just telling you guys this is what i feel this is what i feel is good this is what i feel is bad obviously some people would agree to it and some people would disagree but my guy does not care he's still saying what he wants to say and they will come and carry him and <laughs> that's the life I think my own my own part is that like i just don't like how it goes for women yeah how he attacks women he specifically attacks, like go and fight with someone your size. Literally, <laughs> if you want to call out someone, make sure yeah. it's someone that it's your. That's someone, someone you can actually fight with physically. More man, like no. Yeah, well, well, I feel in some in some aspects, it's it comes out disrespectful. It's a bit in some aspects, mm. but in Nigeria, like they say, you have to be crazy to live in pick Nigeria. Your own size, literally, that's all I'm going to say. Like, just uh, pick your size yeah. and face that person. Come Honestly, on, pick Daniel. Please, don't pick size with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, so do you think fitness influencers have like a positive or negative impact fitness on people that are watching yeah like you you're a fitness influencer literally uh, of course you have a positive impact because when i talk about fitness yeah it is something you have to do for every i tell everyone that's why i say i'm surprised why everybody does not know anything about fitness mm-hmm. it is something you actually have to know about even if it is not a priority in your life mm-hmm. you have to at least exercise once or twice i would say a week or in a month because our body we don't know what's going on in our body except you go to the hospital to go for um, checks up and mm. all but i've had people that just broke down mm. because they were stressed yeah all those kind of stuff but if if you work out you train your body for 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 times like that where you're stressed and all if you're in a situation like that and you work out, trust me, you'll be able to handle all this kind of situation. Mm-hmm. But if you don't work out and you're in a situation where you have to run a long distance, you collapse on you the way. You pass out. Yeah. <laughs> so fitness is just preparing you for occasions where you're not prepared for. So it's good. I mean, that's a positive impact on people. You say negative impact. Yeah. Negative uh, fitness. Like you put pressure on people. <laughs> positive pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm wanting you to to make a change yeah, in your life. You're so, trying right? to help them, right? Except you want to see it in a bad way. Mm. Like some people say, ah, oh, you're just showing off your body and all. Mm-hmm. Why would I show off my body? But at the same time, I'll still let you know that this body you can actually still get it if you put in the work. So, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I mean, why would like, I show off my body? Off why? Body? Why won't he? If you have it. If you have this body, you will be Please, walking you around can, you topless. You can cover your body and then be hiding what you know you can show off. <laughs> so, like, how do you stay... Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't ask you that because you're very consistent <laughs> in workouts. But I was going to ask, how do you stay consistent in putting out that content? Like, is it now that you have that following and that community yeah. that and people that look up to you, how consistent 
Do you? Well, I would say I've actually been so consistent until I had to focus on this, my last competition, mm. yeah? My fitness was an everyday thing. If I don't make a post on my feed, I make a post on my story. Yeah, so okay. I, as long as I go to workouts that day, you're going to see a feedback from me. That's basically it. If, uh, if Daniel is going to the gym, you'll know you on Instagram. Know. <laughs> you definitely know because I'm always in my camera. It is always with me. When I started working out and I was still slim, most people would tell me, ah, this Daniel, he just comes to the gym to take pictures. Because uh-huh. well, now uh, they're seeing they the... seeing the difference and I'm still taking the, the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's been chilled, actually. It's, it's okay keeping up with it because it's what I like doing. Mm. It has been what I like doing. So, it's chilled. Would you say you've made, like, personal sacrifices to be where you are today. Of course, I have. Can you tell me about it? Uh, in my content creation or in fitness? In everything. Personal, personal sacrifices are doing things for myself. I have basically done everything when it comes to working out, having to pay for my gym subscription and all. It has been something I took upon myself because like I said, not my family does not even support it. When I started, they were mm-hmm. like, why are you working out? What's the gain in working out? They didn't yeah. see that anything. But I took it upon myself. When I had extra money, I would pay for gym subscriptions, pay for my supplements. Supplements are expensive. I had. So, so, so expensive. I had To keep up with it. <laughs> yeah, so those, those, those has been the challenges. But if it's what you like doing, you're going to find a way to do it. That's just been it. Lovely. Yeah. So who are like your role models, people you look up to in the fitness, acting, modeling industry? Everything together. You can just say for fitness, this person. Yeah. For acting, this person. <laughs> but funny enough, there's not one person that fits in all of these. Everything. And doing just in the world. <laughs> My guy is, he, he's, he's doing well in the fitness industry. He's doing well in the entertainment industry. And he's doing well also as um, an entrepreneur. He has a very big tequila farm. Mm. You need to see what's going on in that farm. That man is hardworking. Yeah. So I always look up to him because he's, he's basically doing well in everywhere I'm looking up to. So, yeah. Dwayne Johnson covers up for Acting. everything. Yeah. I don't know if he models, but... No, nah, he doesn't. Does he fitness. model? We are fitness, yeah. yeah. And becoming a good entrepreneur. Who, what Nigerian? Let's, because people <laughs> might know. If you don't know who Dwayne Johnson is... You're not in this world, <laughs> please. If you don't know who he is. <laughs> the Rock. The Rock, right? The Rock, yeah. <laughs> Everybody should know that one. Everybody should know The yeah. Rock, right? Yeah. yeah, but what about in Nigeria? Like, who do you look up to? I say I am Nino. Mm. Yeah, the actor. Yeah. He does quite well. Yeah, his body as well. And he's still an actor. So um, my the people I look up to, they, they know they what know they do. They know what to do. Yeah. So right. he's still an actor and he works out well. So he'll be the one out. He's the main one for Nigerian. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can I ask, how old are you? You want to take a guess? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say 27, 28. Sadly, I'm 24. 24. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they always say I look older than my age. You yeah. do. You know. Whenever I just tell someone I'm 24, they'd be like, you're lying. They just actually Maybe think I'm you're lying. lying. Like, for real? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, yeah, I'm you 24. Look like you're going to be like pushing 28, no. close to 30. I turned 24 this year. So I'm 25 next year. I'm a baby. Oh my God. That's so cute. And, and you have all of yeah, this. That's my advantage. Yeah. I can go places where my age means can't can go. go to. Yeah. Nice. Cheap. <laughs> Are nice. you doing well for yourself at 24? Actually, actually. I mean, you, you started paying your school fees in secondary school. Yeah. When I did that, my dad was shocked. Like, so, I, I was shocked as well. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you're only 24. It's if, very impressive. I feel it's just the way I set my own things to be. When 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 you don't want to bother anybody, that mm-hmm. has just been my stuff. I'm 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 this kind of person that I would hardly go to ask for things. I don't know why. I feel some kind of way asking people for things. So it's better I do them myself. Yourself. So yeah. So what advice would you give to anyone looking to start, you know, fitness training, um acting? Content creation. Okay, let's start from you're doing a lot. Yeah. I should ask, how how are you able to balance everything together? 
your fitness, yeah. your acting career, your modeling. Mr. I do Nigeria. <laughs> like, there's that as well. Yeah. And your forex trading. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> not you, easy. You should be carrying, like, a whole lot <laughs> on your very massive shoulders. Like It's not easy. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to make it out in Nigeria, you can't just put your basket, your, your egg in one basket. Mm. How do they say it? So, yeah, I just... You have to... You, for, you always have to find a way to balance it. When I started the competition, I had to drop working out. Mm. Yeah, I would just do my push up when I wake up in the morning in my room because I mean that is where I started from my basic workout. Yeah. yeah, so that was what I did. I had to leave forex totally because I wasn't going to be risking money when money. I knew my attention wasn't fully into it. Yeah, yeah so I, I I I stopped on forex for even till now I've still not gone into it. Um. Yeah, so I've basically just been focusing more on my fitness and the acting. I'm going for um, Real Arts Academy. I'm a student there now presently. Yeah. So nice. that is where my focus is mainly now on my acting career. I mean, I have the body, so I can I can still skip workouts for a while. <laughs> yeah. But I will definitely need to come back fully in it. Have you been featured in a movie? Yeah. The it's not out yet. Okay. Yeah. The, the title is In Our Shoes. In- so you guys should watch out for it. Yeah, well. we're definitely looking out for that. <laughs> yeah. We're definitely looking out for that. So yeah, back to the advice on anyone looking to start fitness, go into fitness creating, you know, yeah. fitness creation, lifestyle, and all of I that. I would say to, if if you're wanting to do something, for you to have that idea, for you to want to do it, yeah, it's it's a passion. Mm. So you have to just keep on doing it because discouragements will come. Some financial step down will come. But you want to do it, just keep on doing it. Because if you don't do it, what else would you do? Like there's nothing to fall back on. Just I've 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 always had that if you can't do it, nobody else will do it for you. Mm. So you have to just do it yourself. Yeah. As long as you have the passion to do it, start from where you are. That's basically just it. Lovely. I hope you guys heard him. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just do it. Like Nike we say. Yeah. Just do it. Just go ahead. Just and do, do it. it. Yeah. Just do it. So if you had the chance like okay sorry who's your who's your favorite like superhero hmm i don't want to say, superman is everybody's superhero i knew you were going to say superman nah, because was... you look like superman <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i was saying he, he's the first person that came to my head yeah. superman superman yeah. you like to, would you like to like if you had the choice to be a superhero, a superhero for of course a day. I, would be, <laughs> I would be superman of course superman. everybody likes superman right. and he does the right thing so I mean, it's good to be known to do the right thing. To do the right thing. So. Lovely. So, I mean, it's been really <laughs> insightful. It's been yeah. so fun having you in the studio. Talking, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I hope you had fun. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> talking about my whole life. Your whole life. And it's been really inspiring yeah, and nice. very motivating. I'm sure anyone watching this would learn a lot from you yeah. because you're doing so well at 24. I'm mm-hmm. still shocked, though, <laughs> that you're at 24. Like, we're literally almost age mates. Are you serious? Wow. But you're older than me. I know already. <laughs> you think? Guess my age. Hmm. 26? <laughs> Are you blushing? <laughs> <laughs> no, when people tell me that I look older than my age. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Because, like, wow, nice. But it's I'm just... not 26. Are you serious? Yeah. Tell I'm 23. More. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> I wouldn't believe that. Right? I wouldn't believe Nobody that. Nobody usually That's crazy. That is crazy. Wow. Me. When I said I'm 23. That's nice. That is nice. Thank so you. you're just like me then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love talking to people like that. Like yeah. people that are very innovative from such yeah. a young from age. Because it takes so much. And also people are very relaxed. And that's the thing. And I expect things to come to them. Well, those are people that had things being brought up to them from their young age. Mm-hmm. And they, just, they just feel so relaxed. But there are some people who yes. have been giving stops and then they still want to do things for they themselves. Want to do things for so themselves. So if you're lazy, you're going to be lazy. It just depends on yourself. You, yeah. yeah. That's just it. So yeah. it's very nice. I really like meeting innovative people like you. And it's been an amazing pleasure having you yeah, in the nice. studio. Nice having this talk I hope you had fun. Talking yeah, I did. To it's me. been chill. <laughs> It's been... Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your life yeah, with us you for and me. sharing your experiences. It's been really lovely. It's been nice here as well. So thank so you. Guys, this is the end of this episode. I hope you had fun watching. It was very interesting. It was a very insightful one. I hope you take some things out of our conversations. The funny, the you know, the important ones, yeah. the funny ones as well. But yeah, I hope you take something out of it. So don't forget to, you know. 
like, share, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram for more interesting and motivating and funny videos like this. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.